Hello, my soccer nerds. For a quick review of match day one in the new Europa Conference League league phase, match day one. I pulled on my Conference League Lusk shirt from three seasons ago already. Lusk, of course, played in the Conference League now as well. Got a 2 2 draw at home to Deer Gardens, a result that ahead of the game I would have taken. After the game, yeah, you had a 2 0 lead. We'll talk a little bit more about that one later on. I also want to give credit to Rapid, who get the only Austrian win this week, and it was a really emphatic one. Rapid completely turned it around. They were kind of the laughing stock from the Austrian League. Now they're the only team that seems to have a plan of how to play in Europe and they're getting really good results along the way. Rapid is probably going to lift that coefficient quite a bit and the Austrian coefficient definitely need that one. However, the big three from the last season need to up their game for sure. And I very much look at Lask here too because in the Conference League, Austrian teams should make points. We also had some fun games, especially the Chelsea at home to Ghent, which was probably the top clash of the round. We had also upsets, two Polish upsets, and we will talk all about these now in a longer edit of the short videos that I've posted, where we first talk about the results, then you get a little bit more about my thoughts on the last game, then we'll talk about standings, projections, and so on. Rapid gets Austria's first win in the new league phase of any of the European competition. 2-1 away to Bajakshi here. Two Louis Schaub goals just before and just after the half. Given that there were two very marginal offside goals also called off, this could have been a much more emphatic score. And on the other side, Piontek equalized just before the half and also had a big chance to equalize late in the game. But overall, it was a very dominant, a very concentrated performance by Rapid. Vittoria de Guimaraes also started off the Conference League well with a 3-1 home win over Celia. Celia's score came very, very, very late when Victoria de Guimaraes were already cruising. The biggest win on Thursday came in Circle. Bruges beat St. Garin at home 6-2. It was 3-0 at the half. It was 4-0 before St. Garin could score the first goal. 6-1, then 6-2. On the first foray into Europe, Tiny Heidenheim took on Olympia Ljubljana, got a 2-1 win. Beck scoring very early on, Heidenheim bossing the game left and right. So it came out of nowhere and Blanco in the 77th minute headed in an equalizer. I have a few minutes later a penalty is given. Paul Wanner, German-Austrian, 18-year-old on loan from Bayern Munich, steps up, sees his penalty safe but on the rebound he converts and Heidenheim get their first ever European win. Another big upset in the early games was Legia beating Betis at home 1-0 Capuadi scoring the goal early on. It was a game where Legia definitely had the better chances while Betis bossed the possession but overall I would say a good win for Legia. Spanish teams this week? I don't know doesn't look all that great. In Banja Luka, Bakasetas gave Paninakos an early lead and it seems like the Greek Cup winners might get a win. However, right after the half, Despotovic gets an equalizer and then actually Paninakos were a little bit hanging on. There was another really good chance for Banja Luka. In there, it ends in a 1-1 draw. Even with a totally rotated squad, Chelsea win easily over Ghent 4-2. It was one-way traffic towards the Ghent goal. Mudrik assists Velga on the opener. Then, just after the half, Pedro Neto adds a second one. Velga also assists Kunku after Watanabe had pulled one back. So it's 3-1 Dewsbury Hall, 4-1 very late on. Again, make it 4-2. Chelsea show that they are very much the class of this competition. However, defensively, they maybe can be gotten it. So we have to see how it will develop further on. But Chelsea at the moment are actually quite some fun to watch. Another Polish upset happened in Copenhagen, where Copenhagen had a 1-0 halftime lead through Hatsidiakos. However, Polulu equalizes right after the half and then in stoppage time, he assists Shurlinov, who makes it 2-1 for Yagi. Alonia, Biawistok. TNS kept it tight in Florence. However, the class of Fiorentina came through. Yasin Adli, who came from Milan, opened the scoring and then Moise Kane just a few minutes later doubles the lead. Fiorentina could have scored, of course, too, but you know, a win is a win. And lastly, I also saw highlights for Lugano against HJK Helsinki, which ended in a 3 0 win for the Swiss side. It was more or less dominant. What was notable is that the game had to be played in tune, so there were almost more Finnish fans than Swiss fans there. At least that's how it felt. So what can I tell you about Lusk's 2-2 draw at home to Dürer Gardens? First of all, fan protest ticket prices are too high. The organized scene stayed outside of the stadium, chanting there. It was an eerie atmosphere once again. Yes, there were a few fans in there, but you know, with those ticket prices, you will not be able to fill the stadium. It's also one of the reasons that I was not at the stadium. The other one, of course, it's late on a school night. It's not gonna happen. 
honestly. The game itself, I think Jurgen showed that they are overall the better team for the first 15 minutes. Lask were really hanging in there. Jurgen's even with a changed lineup, very much the better team. However, you could also see that Lask have the better individual players. Fortunately, a key moment already happened in the 10th minute when Usor twisted his knee, had to come off, and then Flecker from a fibula break in preseason made his season debut. However, that actually kind of then settled the game and Lask got better in the game, was a little bit more physically and took the lead when Stojkovic plays an almost an errant ball but the Swedish goalkeeper doesn't know what to Berisha runs through and then from a very acute angle outside of the box he turns around and puts it into net brilliant goal absolutely brilliant goal love that one two bits I was hoping that Lusk can double the lead or in the first half but then the game kind of got a little bit more neutralized yes Ljubic had some minor chances also didn't like the referee made some really bad calls here and there when you know a corner kick not given or a handball call when there was no handball stuff like that second half started great Ljubicic had a very early shot on goal yes your gardens also there were a few good saves that actually Sieben Handel had to make throughout the game however then Ljubicic brilliantly assists Florian Flecker who just outpaces the goal who again errant out of the goal 2-0 in the 49th minute and everyone in last class thinking yeah we might get a with this one we're gonna win this game however then comes a triple substitution that everyone has been talking about and i'm not thinking that it's necessarily the players that came on however it a little bit unsettled the balance you brought off berisha who was running really uh, well bello who was actually a threat and yes you had to bring on Bochade for Flecker and the center of midfield didn't look as solid anymore and then it was a lot of individual errors until Wichelm puts a pass in and Priske from short distance cuts the lead of Lusk in half and then very much Durgardens on top of the game in the 60th minute the Durgarden coaches they have two coaches bring on the cavalry a lot of starters Durgardens did play with the second string lineup and one of those takes a shot from far out after again Siebenhandel making a really great save in the 65th minute. It's an equalizer and the momentum was very much with your guards. At that moment my feelings went from yeah we're gonna win this one to oh I hope we're not losing this one. And Shop definitely thought the same. He wanted to bring on some defensive stability. Robert Schul had to come off managing him because you, we don't want to have him injured because he's more or less a life insurance. Boateng comes on and yes it settles again and the game got again neutralized. There were actually some good chances for Lusk in there as well. There was a lovely shot from Entrup. He has not played much so far for Lusk but when he comes on I really love what he's doing. There was also a really good one by Horvath where the defender just takes the ball in the gut and then has to be treated. I had a feeling that at the end Jurgens were kind of happy with the 2-2. I think if they would have gone all out they might have been able to win this one. They were the better team. Lusk had probably the better individual players and that was very much on this play there. Ahead of the game, knowing what I knew about Jürgen before and also what I know now about them, I think I would be happy with it. I mean, this is the pot two team. A draw, probably not such a bad result. Also, kudos to their fan base. They brought tons of fans to Linz and they were responsible for the atmosphere. Sadly enough, in the end, 2-2 draw. I think it's a decent start, but thanks to leading 2-0 early in the second half, you also have the feeling, yeah, could have been more. And that's a little bit annoying. Okay, the standings after match they won do not tell us much, so I tried to add a little bit more info. You see towards the right after the points, you see the chances of them finishing in places 1 to 8 and then 9 to 24, meaning that you get in this playoff and also for winning the competition. And probably most interestingly, I added this bar on the right where a green bar tells you you had a really good performance. A red bar said your chances overall decrease. So for instance, in 17th, you find Lusk, my team. And yeah, there's a little red bar because because at home you are more or less expected to win. Also note, I use the Roundel logo for Lusk for European competitions because I like it a whole lot better and there there's not this similarity to Sturm Graz that I have within the Austrian league. Biggest bar, difficult name, Jagi Alonia Biavistok. I have been practicing that one. I got it wrong <laughs> a few times. So this time I got it on the first try. They're sitting now in 12th only, but this was a huge win for the Polish champions. Yes, Polish champions from Eastern Poland. Also notable that one. Chelsea, of course, sits now in 6th, Rapid in 10th, and Heidenheim in 13th. As I said, it doesn't really tell us much. Let's look at the bottom where, of course, we see also Betis in there, which is probably the biggest surprise. First. 
So as I like to say, it's always better to look at the projected standings where we also have average results for the remaining five games in there. Bet is now fall out of the top eight. They are now in 10th. It's still Chelsea, but Fiorentina and Rapid. Wow, big away win. That boosted their chances quite some. Lega is also in there. as is Vittorio de Guimaraes. Exactly, Bruges after the 6-2 win, really doing well. I'm a little bit scared about that home game for Lask too. Maybe this is a much better team than I would have called for Lask in 18th. I really hope we get a seeded playoff spot. Let's put it that way. Overall chances for Betis did not take as much of a hit. They're still co-favorites, but you see, Fiorentina and Betis together have as much chance of winning the competition as Chelsea. Chelsea are the favorites for this competition. Heidenheim hang in there. I actually wouldn't be surprised if Heidenheim make a little bit of a deeper run, but I already said, I think we will get some surprise team in the quarters or in the semis. Lusk. Now 15th, yeah, 78% to at least reach the playoff. I take those chances and I hope there's more rapid though. Um, bravo! And I'm not saying this lightly, given that my love for rapid is relatively limited. As for the upcoming games, there are two that stick out for me that I will watch probably very focused, which is Rapid against Noah at home, because that's what I will see on TV, and especially Lusk's game in Ljubljana. Given what I saw from Ljubljana, this could be a really tricky one. I again, take a draw. I'll take a draw. I wish for a win, of course. The tie that stands out for me is Betis hosting Copenhagen, two teams upset by Polish opponents in the first round. So that one, I think... You might have a note next to it. And then, of course, Panathinaikos hosting Chelsea. That's a pretty big game, and I expect a very intimidating atmosphere in Athens. If the fans are allowed, I'm never sure about that, because, you know, in Greece, the fans can get a little bit wild. Fiorentina have to play at San Garn, which is also not a too uninteresting game. As I'm looking at Lusk's next opponents, two of them, the two remaining home opponents, meet in Iceland, Viking Gur against Circle Bruges. So let's see. That's also a game that I will look at with a little bit of interest. It's a very, very early kickoff. Okay, those are my thoughts on match the one of the Conference League due to Lusk being in there. I actually pay attention also due to Rapid being in there. I pay more attention to this competition than I probably will do to the Europa League, although there are the bigger teams in there. So you will always get a review video on Conference League action. Please let me know your thoughts on what you saw from the Conference League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!